Hi, I'm Seth Freudberg. I'm the Director of Options Training here at SMBU in Manhattan. I'm also the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. So uh, today I would like to talk about the use of filters to find candidates for a particular option strategy. This came up because I have a mentoring student who uh, has a really interesting uh, bi-weekly broken wing butterfly strategy that he uses. And in uh, using this, what he does is he uh, has a filter that he uses to identify stocks whose options meet his risk reward trade-off and pricing standards for this particular strategy. So he digs into the filter, he finds several candidates that will work uh, for the strategy and then he puts the trades on. So um, I was thinking about this as an opportunity to share with all of you what I think are the pluses and minuses of using filters to identify candidates for, for options strategies. It can work out, but there are some dangers and pitfalls you need to be aware of. So what are those dangers and pitfalls? Uh, if you use a filter, let's say if you, you use some kind of a formula filter that will draw up 50 stocks for you to take a look at uh, in connection with a particular uh, strategy. All right. Well, there's a very good chance that you are unfamiliar with 40 of those 50 stocks or, you know, you may have heard of them, you may not have heard of them, but in terms of being familiar with them, there's a pretty good chance that most of them you're not going to be familiar with. Um, so you don't know a lot about that stock. You may not know, you may just know the, the ticker symbol. You may not know the industry they're in. You may not know what makes that stock move. You, you may not know how that stock tends to react to earnings. Uh, you may not know when it's dangerous to trade uh, this particular stock. You don't know when the, talk, the stock seems to have a cycle of, of being calm. Maybe two months after earnings, it tends to go into a calm phase. Um, but you don't know that because you don't know anything about the symbol itself. Uh, there was uh, someone who I knew once who described on a webinar um, that he knew a particular stock as well as he knows the mole on his wife's back. Okay, that's the kind of familiarity you need to have with something you're trading uh, as opposed to um, a ticker symbol coming up in a filter and you really have no idea, you know, what you're trading. Uh, another thing you won't know about a, a random stock that's come up on a filter is its volatility cycles. And what I mean by that is certain stocks, um, their options volatility will increase um, in patterns. And so, for example, uh, right up coming up to earnings on a particular uh, uh, stock, you may find that this stock has a uh, pattern of having its volatility start to pick up and heat up, say, two weeks before earnings for a particular stock. Well, that's very important information to know if you're going to trade it, especially if you're going to be trading it around earnings. That could affect when you can get out of the stock, for example. Uh, or, excuse me, out of, the, uh, out of the strategy, for example. If volatility is high and getting higher, you may be stuck inside the strategy for a while, and that can be a very difficult circumstance, particularly if the strategy has a, a, a property where you, you get in and out of the trade, basically. So um, you, you may not know about its cycles as, as a stock itself. You may not know its volatility cycles. And probably most importantly, you would not know about its liquidity of its options. Um, you know, those of you who are used to trading SPY options or IWM options or whatever, and you have penny-wide spreads, uh, you're in for a rude awakening with certain stocks uh, that, uh, you know, don't have a lot of liquidity, don't have a lot of play, and all of a sudden uh, you will be in the, you will, be, you will own an option that you're going to have a lot of trouble getting rid of at a reasonable price uh, because of the lack of liquidity on that particular strike, for example. So. In summary, um, it's great to use filters to find uh, options change that are going to work for your strategy. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying it can be a good thing. But you need to be aware of the individual stock's price patterns, its volatility patterns, and most importantly, the liquidity of the options. And if you really don't know those three, in my opinion, you don't have uh, much business actually being involved in strategies and exposing your capital uh, to those strategies because they're just 
too many uh, unknowns in the situation. So what I'd suggest as a solution to this is that you identify uh, a basket of stocks. Let's call it 20 stocks, 25 stocks. And you tell yourself, this is going to be the universe that I'm going to be working with. And then you, uh, you study those 25 stocks uh, for a period of time, maybe three months, maybe six months. So you can understand the patterns of price, liquidity, and volatility of those particular options. Uh, once you've kind of gotten that down pat and maybe thrown on a very, very small trade to, because that may be the only way you're really going to know uh, about liquidity, that may be the one thing where you will be forced to expose your capital to some extent in order to understand the liquidity and the execution within that particular uh, option chain. But uh, other than that, the rest can be studied simply through paper observation uh, of the options volatility and the, the pricing patterns of the stock or whatever you happen to be trading. So in summary, uh, it's a very bad idea to just, uh, one thing I can tell you is a bad idea is to just accept the results of a filter and throw a trade on because on the surface it appears to meet your pricing standards. There's a lot more to it than that. And uh, if, you, if you don't study a basket of stocks and get familiar with them, familiar enough so that when you get into a trade you're doing so with confidence, um, it's most likely the strategy is not going to work out. It may work out on paper, but when you actually get in there and trade it, uh, a lot of times you can be surprised because what happens in a paper trade is not necessarily what happens when you try to execute something live uh, in the actual marketplace. So not trying to discourage the use of filters, just trying to say there are downsides to it. If you're a careful, solid uh, trader, you won't jump into things without study. That's all I'm suggesting here. Study a basket of stocks, then, and, and you can make that basket as large as you want. You may want to have 50 stocks in it to give yourself even more opportunities for something to bubble up in a filter. Uh, but what I am saying is have it be a number of stocks that you can reasonably expect to have a decent feel for before you go in and jump in and trade and get into an options chain that's, that's going to uh, mistreat you. So just some advice uh, for those of you who like to trade strategies like that, and I'll see you next week.